We will begin with a new course called as Mechanics of Solid, which is often abbreviated as MSOL. In few universities, this course is also studied as Strength of Materials and abbreviated as SOM. Now, in, in semester 2, you all must have studied a course called as Engineering Mechanics engineering mechanics wherein you considered or your first assumption while studying this course was that uh, that the material was rigid right but in semester 3 you all must have studied a course on material science wherein you all must have probably uh, heard that no material in the nature is rigid right there will be some deformation which might not be visible to us directly but there has to be some deformation in any material so this course mechanics of solid is nothing but to see the response of any material when it is subjected to external force externally applied force let us try to understand with this concept with some of these pictures now when we say that the material is rigid that means we, we, we think of a material which is very strong or very hard and the first material which probably comes to your mind is diamond right but no matter how strong is the material for the external applied force for the external applied force there has to be some deformation in the material it might not be visible to us directly but there has to be some deformation now if we come to engineering material like for example here there is probably a steel which is used in, in this automobile for a crash there has to be some deformation and probably this deformation will be visible to us directly right because this material might not be as strong as this material but no, mat no matter what kind of material we use, there has to be some deformation in the material. And then we will come to this images in a while. But let us see what happens to the material when it is subjected. What happens? Let us see what happens to the material when it is subjected to externally applied force or any kind of threat. Let us see what is the output that we get when the material is subjected to external threat. Here we see a man who is sitting in the garden. And by just by looking at him, we might not be able to understand the, whether this man is under some stress or uh, under some tension, right? You see, nature is the best engineer and we all try to mimic the nature. Now, Stress, therefore the stress is also a very general term which is used in a daily life for different perspective. We often say don't take much stress or, or else you might face some problem, some consequences on your health, right? So, stress is a very general term. Now, what is stress? Stress is, stress is, stress is body's way, stress is body's way stress is body's way of response stress is body's way of response to any kind to any kind of threat right stress is a body's way of response to any kind of threat but stress is something which cannot be visualized by other person it can only be experienced suppose say if this man is taking some stress but that stress we will not be able to visualize but he can very well experience it but there is one more response to this external threat which can be visualized by the other people for example if suppose if this man is taking some stress then probably he might face the problems of say hypertension or some heart problem he might face some back pain he might have some screen rashes or he might gain a weight he might become overweight fine so this is also the response to the threat now stress is body's way of response to any kind of threat similarly these are also the responses to this external threats 
Now, all these terms like hypertension, heart problem, back pain, screen rushes, overweight can be put together, can be put together and can be called as, can be called as strains. Fine. So, stress is also the body's way of response to any kind of threat. Similarly, strain is also, similarly, the strain is also the response to any kind of threat. And as we had said earlier, stress is something which cannot be visualized by other person, but strain is something which can be visualized by other person. Stress can be only experienced by the one who is taking it, right? Same thing happens in the engineering material. The deformation or the strain can be visualized by us directly, whereas the stresses cannot be visualized. Of course, nowadays, nowadays there are certain tools, certain softwares which are developed by which we can predict how much will be the stress. For example, this is the human skull, right? And then here the stress analysis is performed wherein we can see probably uh, this skull uh, analysis has been done with some impact here at this place or I'm not sure but it looks like here the stress concentration is very much high whereas as we are going away from this spot the stress concentration is becoming very less and less and this is probably a neutral area wherein there is no formation of any stress. Similarly this is the uh, stress analysis of a tooth wherein we can see there is some so high value of high intensity value of stresses which is developed here but as we are going away from this the stresses are less so basically to summarize any material which is subjected to threat will have some response and this response can be in the form of this response can be in the form of either stress or strain so stress and strain is the response of a material to the externally applied force or any kind of external threat. Fine. Now, so in this course, what we will do is we will try to understand when an engineering material is subjected to externally applied force. We will try to understand what is its response that is how much stresses is developed in the material and how much strains will be developed in the material. As we said stress and strain both are the response to the external threats. Fine. So also we need to we will be trying to understand so basically we will be trying to understand what is stress, what is strain. We will also see if there is some relation between this stress and strain in a material and then the way we had seen here when we applied a force to the diamond the deformation might be very less which might not be even be visible to us directly but if the same amount of force is applied to any engineering materials as still we might be able to see certain deformation here or any any other material we might be able to see certain deformation now this happens because of the material behavior or the material constitution so this is also a very important term called as material constitution material constitution so this is also a very important term now in this course what we will try to see is what or what we will try to understand is how this stress and strain are related to each other how this stress and material constitution is related to each other and then how strain and material constitution is related to each other so all this study we will do all this study we will do on engineering material on engineering material like like steel aluminium especially metals fine and then we will try to understand uh, this uh, development of stress and strain on engineering materials especially metals on some specific cross uh, specific engineering structures like bar beam and so on and so on and then we will also try to understand probably in uh, next lecture or say next to next lecture 
whether the stress and strain are are vector quantities or scalar quantities or or something else or something else and this is very important to understand if the stress and strains whether they are vector or they are scalar quantities or they are something else let us see uh, all this in next lecture